I was lucky because Ali was 12 years my senior, so he was almost a kind of secondary father figure. You'll see drawings where there's, there's images of the dunce, he called it, became a character in his drawings. And that dates from the fact that because he wasn't as good at academic subjects, uh, adding and, and reading and writing, um, he was forced to stand in the corner of the classroom with a, a dunce cap in his head made out of uh, old paper. And it's easy as an adult to forget just how traumatic that kind of victimisation and isolation can be to, to a child. So I think that had a major effect on him. Um, obviously he was a very sensitive uh, human being and he reacted against that. He became very good at football <laughs> because and art. And he said later, I said, I think he became good at those two subjects because there was, wasn't wasn't so clearly a way to be tested on and to be definitively right or definitively wrong. And that appealed to him and he became a, a source of escape. I, I remember the first meeting very well because Ali went around like with a hood on and he ever called him the ghost because he never talked to anyone and he was a kind of mysterious character. But I decided I was I was intrigued by him actually about you know, I wanted to get to know him when I was at art school and I was, at art school I was quite kind of cheery, kind of talkative at that, that time, and Ali was very sombre. And, but we started talking in the cafe, I think, in, at the art school about UFOs, so that's how we got talking. Really, we discussed UFOs, and Ali was really interested in that, so was I. And, uh, and it just, you know, the relationship just started from that. And um, I saw his work and I loved his work and he never really seemed to comment much about my work, you know, he, he did make comments every now and then but it was mainly me that admired him, I think. Sam Kanah, 10th April 1991. I write from a world of determined sunshine, of sunglasses and sports cars, of dusty forgotten little paths where the solitary can still wander. There is a feeling of frenzied expectancy, of a summer that will surpass itself in terms of blossom, beauty and intensity. Old Fernand often stands in the village square. He seems dazed, almost unsure whether he is still meant to be here. Then he puts on his dusty cap and turns his wrinkled, noble old face into the shadows. There's a story I've told a few times about this. It's Ali's first break was at the Barbizon Gallery in Bell Street in Glasgow. And prior to that, he'd been doing a lot of pictures, which I thought were, were paintings of what he wanted to be. They were big kind of macho monsters. And just before that show, something happened. And he's, he'd produced a series of paintings. They were really, really honest. And there were these little figures in landscapes. And they were painfully honest. They were obviously lonely. And the landscapes were projections of what was going on in that person's mind. And I remember going to the opening night of that exhibition and witnessing a miracle happen, which was that the people that wandered down that exhibition, every single one of them looked at those paintings and recognised that little lonely figure as themselves, not as a stranger, not as some weird artist, as themselves. And that's what I learned from that, is that the deeper you go in art, really deep, you don't distance yourself from people, you get closer to them. Because if we all go deep down, we're actually joined together like the roots of, of trees in a forest. The thing that keeps us apart is not the deep stuff, it's the shallow or peripheral stuff, the less important stuff that we surround ourselves with. If you go down to the core, you'll meet everyone else there. After his, after his death, which was unexpected, of course, um, we found a whole studio full of, um, of paintings and drawings and lots of drawings and collages and things at his, his house. So we had the question of what to do with that material. So it seems an opportunity to create a retrospective exhibition, which I know is something he would always have wanted. It would have been good to have had it while he was still alive, but the fact that he was then dead um, clearly added more urgency and more of a kind of narrative to the idea with which I could approach galleries. And then there's the practical concern of who would stage such an exhibition. You have to be realistic about what Ali had achieved in his life in terms of, of fame, success or, or lack. 
thereof. Um, so the lily seemed an, a logical choice because it's in Mulgai. It's actually quite high profile gallery for one that's in a, a suburb of Glasgow rather than the city centre. And I reckon that people in Mulgai in the wider area would be very interested in the fact that an artist had done drawings and paintings of their suburb. You know, even the show, the exhibition in, in the Lily Art Gallery or Museum in Mulgai was fantastic, but I wish it would just, I wish it had got more attention, you know, and, uh, but, you know, possibly, possibly through the years it will. I just think it's a shame that Ali had to have a retrospective being dead, you know, which is a, it is a shame, you know, because Ali would have, would have, you know, he deserved more. The nostalgist. The bed, the room, moon above, and I, with horizontal humility, become its sleeping occupant. Bathed in my gentle remembrance, nestle the artefacts of childhood, now lost to the realm of spiders. These companions of nostalgia condemn me for their abandonment. My brothers, now allocated adult roles, ensconced behind the rampart of reality, are taken from me by just and proper need. Yet, as tiredness now seduces my mind and half-sleep's vision slowly forms, I am with them still, running wild and free, hand in hand to our eternal sea.